Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Boom, doo, doo, doo. Boom, doo, 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 doo. Boom, 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 boom. Hello, hello, hello. It certainly is quiet in the country. Is this house haunted? Hmm. Anybody live here? A lonesome ghost. My, this house looks big with just one ghost in it. It feels big. Mm hmm. Can you see me now? Of course not. It's afternoon. Oh. You know, I can't begin to see ghosts till after dark. Then come here and stand still. Mm. That's better. There wasn't anything ghostly about that. Hmm. How's Connecticut been all day? Noisy. That sounds like New York. Carpenters were here. For a change. <laughs> they must be nearly finished on the wing by now. They sounded as though they ought to be. But it doesn't look any different. Did they start on the barn? No. No? But I think they're going to. I hope they're going to. It's all in the estimate. Oh, I'm glad some things turned out like the estimate. Well, wait a minute. We're very lucky with the way the rebuilding has gone. Oh, yes. Usually, things don't turn out the way you expect them to at all. Don't I know it. Especially when it comes to old houses. Mm. Seriously. Don't you think we've done remarkably well so far? Have we, David? Now, look at this dining room. I have been looking at it all day long. Now, the bay window, for instance. This is the, the nicest time of day for the view, isn't it? Yes, it is a wonderful view. But not when you're tired of looking at it. Is that it? Me? Tired of it? No, oh. David. No, I don't mean that. I know, darling. Come here. Sit on my lap. That's a nice invitation. Mm. Did you talk to Mama on the phone? I did, this morning. I talked to her, too, in New York. She is coming back here tomorrow, isn't she? You bet she's coming back. She didn't need much coaxing. <laughs> she's taking the two o'clock train. So late? It's a long day up here by yourself in the country, isn't it? Oh, I wasn't all by myself. The carpenters were here, remember? You know, it's funny, David, but when you listen to hammers and saws long enough, they... Sound as though they're trying to say something. You must have been pretty lonely up here all day. Peter was here. The new handyman with the half wit? Yep. <laughs> he must have been very fascinating to talk to. Very. He doesn't say hardly anything at all. Well, does he do anything? <laughs> he looks for things. Oh. You know, I don't think he's exactly what we need on this farm. Oh, we need so many things on this farm. But you are not to drive around getting the things we need, remember? Remember what Dr. Rowland said? Oh, just because Dr. Rowland said to be careful. I don't have to be a mushroom. Dr. Rowland is one of the best specialists in New York. Well, if he were really good, he'd know I'm going to have a boy. He's good enough for me. And you are to do exactly what he says. All right, I'll just sit here in the rocking chair and twiddle my thumbs all day long. When you get tired of that, I'll loan you mine. You can twiddle them. <laughs> Thank you. Give them to me right now. <laughs> tomorrow you can talk to Mama. She'll be back tomorrow. And she'll go away again. Darling, I, I know it's pretty quiet here now, but wait until the farm's really going. Oh, I can't wait. You'll be sorry you were in such a hurry. When we have... Cows and vegetables and chickens and a baby? No, oh, you'll be so busy you won't know where the day goes. I won't be sorry, don't worry. Now, come on, off my lap. I'm going up and wash off some of that New York dust. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, darling. I'll be right down. David, there's a car in the driveway. We have visitors. David? Can you see who it is from the window upstairs? All right, all right. I'm coming, coming, coming. Hello, Mrs. Norton. Bertha, why, it's you. How wonderful. Uh, well, hello, Mrs. Norton. Bertha and Fritz. Well, what are you doing up here? What a wonderful surprise. Mrs. Norton, it is so good to see oh, you. Oh, wait till David comes down and sees you. He'll just... Oh, oh, please come in. Sit down. How is Mr. Norton? He is oh, all right? He's wonderful. 
You and Bertha, you, you, you look fine. Rich is a little spindly, but he's all right. Oh, please, Bertha, I'm fine. Rich, Mrs. Norton, is she not looking beautiful since she lives in the country? Oh, of course, it's the wonderful fresh air. And the baby. <laughs> oh, with a farm like this, everybody smiles. Oh, it's been months since we saw you. Two and a half weeks only. Oh, it feels like months sometimes. Well, it uh, looks like you and Mr. Norton must have worked very hard. Do you really think so? But of course. Wait, I'll show you. This is the dining room. Oh, in the kitchen. Yes. A fine kitchen. Oh, the house, it, it is very charming. It's so old. It is not like in America. And the land, Bertha. You saw the land? You, you do think it's good land, Fritz. I mean... Really good? I took some of the soil in my hand when I got out from the car. It is rich soil. Here, fine crops will grow. But we haven't done anything with it yet. Oh, you are impatient, Mrs. Norton. <laughs> the farm is slow, Mrs. Norton. You cannot do all in one week or one month or in one life even. Fritz knows. He had a little farm once. We would like someday again a little farm. Yeah, when our rich uncle dies, we'll have a farm. He's not even born yet, our rich uncle. <laughs> well, he, here we are just standing around. Don't you want to sit down? Well, we only just say hello and then we have to go. A car. Oh, oh. Fritz's brother-in-law drives the car. He, he must go. He has business near. Oh, no. That is how we happen to drop in. Oh, but you'll have to wait until Mr. Norton comes down. Oh, Bertha, it's so good to see you. It's so... So very good. We have missed you. And your mother? She's here. No, Bertha. Mama went back to New York. Oh, I'm sorry. But she's coming back tomorrow. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you will be glad she's here. Very glad. Uh, you have uh, perhaps someone every day to help with the house? Well, n no, not yet. We haven't been able to find the, the right person. Then all day you are alone? Maybe you better tell me what it's like in New York. It is as when you were there, only not so nice anymore. Oh, everybody's dressed for spring now. It must be exciting to see them. I do not know everybody. It is not so exciting when one is there, not like here. Hey, in New York, we know the spring only because we read it in the newspapers. I, I bet it's lots quieter in the apartment house now that we've gone. Quieter? I guess it is quieter, a little. I do not like it quieter. Oh, nobody brings great dames in the elevator, and, and other people's cats don't fall down coal holes. Also, no one to smile at us every day. When you get older, smiles, they are very important. Fred, smiles are always important for everybody. Uh, go see if Carl cannot wait with the car. Oh, Fritz, of course he will. You make him. Mr. Norton would never forgive me if you, you, you went without seeing him. Oh, I'll try. Maybe Carl can take care of his business and uh, come back again in an hour. Of course he can. Come on, Bertha, let's go outside with Fritz. There's so much I want to show you. And so much I want to see. Well, I, we I'll be right time. back. I, I'll speak to Carl. Bertha, now tell me honestly, do, do you really like the house? This house, Mrs. Norton? Yes. This is a good house. It gives you its blessings. That's a lovely thing to say, Bertha. And you have done so much since you've been here. Oh, there's so much we want to do. And the baby. Just two months more. <laughs> so now you must be careful, very careful. Oh, I am. Well, it's all arranged. Carl will be coming back in an hour. Oh, wonderful. Now I want you to see all the farm. Oh, that I should like very much. First, I'll go back to the house and get Mr. Norton. Uh, Mrs. Norton, be careful how you walk. It's getting dark. David. David, come on down. I've, I've got a, a, a surprise for you. Mrs. Norton, watch out. Uh, oh, uh, Fritz, she fell. Bertha, come quick. Mrs. Norton shouldn't have run. She should be careful. I, I, I'll, I'll hold her. Oh. You loosen her collar. Mrs. Norton. Mrs. Norton. Oh, oh she opens her eyes. Mm. God, they dark. What happened? Oh, it's nothing serious. You fell, Mrs. Norton. Oh. But, but you're all right now. Mm. All right, it's all right. Bertha, she fainted too sometimes. I fainted? Shh, shh, shh. It is natural. Fritz, we must take her inside. Well, hello there. And if it isn't Fritz and Bertha. 
coming all the way up here to surprise us, and me in the shower. Uh, Mr. Norton... Here, what's happened? Claudia, what's wrong? Uh, it's nothing. Uh, Mrs. Norton, she fell down. Uh, a little thing, don't Claudia, you? Claudia, darling, uh, are uh, you all right? Of course I'm all right. Wasn't I silly to fall down? I was in such a hurry to see you. You were running? She should go in the house. I'm going. I can walk. You're not going to, whether you can or not. Mr. Norton, he carries you. Oh, yeah. such a fuss. Yeah, really, are. darling, I'm fine. Now, shut up and stop kicking your legs. David, I'm all right. I really am. You see, I can't do a thing with her, Bertha. Mrs. Norton, not only for you, but for the baby, too. It is dangerous. I hate being a sissy. <laughs> Well, you be one anyway. You know what? Being a sissy's not so bad in your arms. Well, it's it's not a bad habit. Come on now. Into the house. Darling, you know everything's sort of different since Bertha came. Different? It is? What is? Well, all of a sudden I'm I'm seeing the farm again. The way I want to see it. Mm. Yeah, I know. And the way I want to keep on seeing it. I wanted so much to tell you, and instead I... I fainted. Well, in a way... In a way, I'm... I'm glad you did. Mr. Norton, uh, Fritz, he must go back to New York in an hour, but we have been talking. If you like and... and do not mind, I stay to help until... until Mrs. Norton's mama comes. Bertha, you'd leave Fritz tonight and, and stay with us? Yes, if, if you need me and, and do not mind. Mind? <laughs> mind? I, I should say not, Bertha. As a matter of fact, I, I, I wish I dared to ask you to stay. Oh, Bertha, David and I would love you to stay because, in a way, tonight you've brought the farm back to us. We seldom stop to think how much difference the little comforts and conveniences add to our pleasure from day to day. For instance, next time you're marketing and you pause for an ice-cold drink at the Coca-Cola counter, think how nice it is to be able to enjoy the pause that refreshes right in the store where you're shopping. More and more food stores are installing Coke coolers now for the express purpose of letting you shop refreshed. Uh, pardon me, Mr. King. Oh, yes, Fritz. Hello. Is not this place the Nortons have bought beautiful? Oh, it really is. And wait till you see it when their plans are carried out. Then it'll be unique. Yes, I hope I see it then. But Mrs. Norton, she is so young and so new to farm life. It is not easy. I wonder, does she know what it's like? <laughs> I wonder... Well, one thing I'm sure she doesn't know, and that's that tomorrow will bring her, David, and Mama another visitor. And Mrs. Norton, she loves visits. All women do. Well, this visitor will be the happy woman of Eastbrook. Who is she? That's what you'll find out tomorrow, Fritz. Oh, good. Well, goodbye, Mr. King. Goodbye, Fritz. As I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.